Should the, oh yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> so should the focus be on life and future rather than on the deaths of the children that have been lost to gun violence? So I'm gonna give you a moment, you know, to kind of think of, think just a little bit on these questions. Um, and then I'd like to hear your answer. Uh, so, you know, so should the focus be on life and future or should it be more so on the loss of these young people um, as, well, kind of the state of urgency was really, you know, emotional and it needed to be right, but should, should the focus be on life and future? So that's the first question. Anybody have a thought about that? Um, I think both, mm -hmm. because I think it's important to highlight what happened, because there's a lot of times, even me, like, I don't know about a lot of stuff that's going on. Like, mm -hmm. I, sometimes I'm oblivious to what's even happening until someone brings it up. And I'm like, like you just said, we had that many deaths. I had no idea. Right. So I think it's important to bring it up and address what happened and then address Mm -hmm. the future and what needs to be done about it so that we know why we're having these conversations and why it's important. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think a little bit of both, like, I don't think we should just completely just talk about the future and not, you know, mm -hmm. address it. But I also don't think we should only address it and not, you know, talk about mm -hmm. what we're doing. So I think a little bit of both. Will be okay. good. Honestly, I believe in order to, move forward from this issue we kind of have to kind of really deep look deep down and find the root of the issue because and actually talk about the ugly truth instead of finding some ways to make it a softer blow mm -hmm. with using euphemisms and such which is not going to help anything except confuse people mm -hmm. from the actual narrative of what's going on here Mm -hmm. um and if we're being honest we need to actually start discussing the real truth of why these keep happening mm -hmm. and why the system is built up into this way and why younger people especially in um just like durham keep why does it keep happening if mm -hmm. we keep we have the opportunity and we have the choice to change laws and change mm -hmm things that can prevent the people from dying who are alive right now, the people who are going to become our generation who are alive right now. Mm -hmm. Yet we do not have, we, we have the inability to change that. So mm -hmm. I feel like we need to move forward from the future of our generation of this world from dying. We need to actually discuss what the real issue is mm -hmm. and then take action after that. Thank you. Yes. Should trauma be discussed? 100%. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think that's how we relate to topics by, from experiences. Mm -hmm. So like if I've had experience with gun violence, that's how I would relate to the topic. So I think it's important to discuss traumas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what do you suggest as the theme? Um, thinking, well, of course, because you're young people, right? So what do you suggest as the theme? How would you think that this would be most, not acceptable by young people, but how, how would it be most inviting and inclusive for young people? Like for example, Ryan's cover. You know, I mean, um, and I'm not, yeah, well, I'm kind of suggesting that, but I'm just saying, what what do you think the theme should be? What, How would you want it to feel as you entered um, this room or this space? Ryan's cover, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> just play it um, on the speaker. I'll say again, Jordan, sorry. Oh. Just play a song on the speaker as people walk in. I think that, I think that. Yeah. 
or maybe like um usually people are really a, who can like people have secret talents okay and people who can sing who say they can't sing can actually sing so what if like we have karaoke is even really fun and even if you can't sing it's always fun to sing a funny song and I feel like that's a cool way to like get people like especially younger people comfortable with mm-hmm. doing stuff like that in front of other younger people so you know that we're not going to make fun of you in a place like this and we all cannot take each other too seriously um what right <laughs> in the chat um perhaps that's just a thing but yeah and just well, playing well, music well, honestly yeah yes. I hear oh go ahead Jordan. Jordan go ahead. i was just gonna say um it should be presented more as something fun and then we talk about the issues because one thing about youth we're not quick to spill out our feelings and especially in this day and age so it needs to be I don't want to say like disguise like but it needs to be it needs to feel like I'm comfortable I'm having fun and then you can sit down and have these conversations and it doesn't feel like I'm in a room with people I don't know like I I just enjoy it myself with these people so I really think like what Natalia said like that would just break the ice get people comfortable and then you could have that conversation I could not have said it any better thank you so much yeah yeah and there won't be speakers <clears throat> adults speaking that was <laughs> excuse me that was one of the things that was talked about first but then the concept came about having an adult at the table instead of, ha- instead of having a panel of adults speaking at young people. So lots of folks felt that it was important for the sheriff and the um, chief of police to be there. If they're there, then they may be seated at one of the tables, right, to listen to what young people are saying because um, adults and people that say that they are involved in this space usually do not hear what young people say. They speak to young people about how they feel and what their perception is, but not necessarily having to hear the hard truths from young people. And so that's why it's been well, that's why it's been turned around um, to that way. So are there any particular um, adults that you feel need to be seated at? Um, this is just an opinion. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, can I add just like an opinion about the... Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I believe maybe like, can we add like sports coaches like yeah. from like coaches who are like basketball coaches or some co- like kids who recognize that kind of this kind of people because they work with them in sports because yeah. i mean i'm not intimidated by police officers some kids may be due to their upbringing of like maybe like kids and what they've seen with police officers and not every single one is a bad apple however um some younger people might be a little intimidated by police officers so if they have like if they match someone their vibe <laughs> with like uh like coaches from their what the sports they, they have taken maybe they could be more open into sharing mm-hmm. thank you irene and ryan what do you think about and cammy what do you think about involving um police officers as as adults that are seated at the table do you have any opinions or thoughts about that? To be honest, it's the hierarchy of authority that police officers have that makes us so scared. It doesn't even have to be anything that we do wrong. It's more so of probably because of more of the internet, more word of spread. So that means the ideas of everyone and how they view police officers can be very different than what we want to believe in, what they really are. They're supposed to be there to help. However, the ideals of pushing, you know, bad uh, examples have become so prominent that it's very difficult for them to, you know, be there as a person that can help instead of just being there as an authority figure. 
Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I believe that everybody has like their own opinions about police officers, but it's still important for them to be like there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cammie, do you have an opinion or thought about that? No, not really. Okay. She looks so cute. <laughs> I was going to say, too, um, I think it depends, too, because there are some police officers I feel like I can just walk up to and have a conversation and feel comfortable. And then there's other ones, like I'm going the other way. So I think mm -hmm. it depends on their approach as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, if they're going to be there, just be there to listen um, not really be defensive, mm -hmm. not feel attacked, because if they do, kids are going to limit the things that they say. So they're not going to be as open and honest as they need. And this is a conversation where you have to be open, like sugarcoating things aren't, isn't going to get anything solved. So mm -hmm. I just don't want them to feel like, I don't want to get in trouble or I can't say this because I'll get in, you know what I mean? So it depends on who it is. It, sh it should be like officers that are used to being with youth and can kind of have conversations, take stuff lighthearted, you know what I mean? Like a little bit more personable, mm -hmm. not too stern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gordon and Angie, I don't know if you remember when we had our conversation with law enforcement, it's been a few years ago, but it was talking about the same challenges. <laughs> anyway, and so the officers had to show up. They could not wear their uniforms. They did not have, you know, guns or anything like that. Were either of you a part of those conversations? Yes, I remember. Okay, okay. Likewise. Yeah, and then there was one officer who you know, got an attitude. And I had to, you know, tell him that this was like if he was sitting at a table with his children and having a conversation, would he react like that? Would he have his arms folded? And would he get an attitude? And, you know, that, that kind of calmed him down. But so that, so I hear what you're saying about the kind of person that would be at the table because that would not work and I would not stand for it, as you saw. Um, should arts be included? I think we- Can I yeah. comment something quickly about that? Yes. I, would, um, I would love to see resource officers that are actually in the schools be there um, because I feel like there's a difference between like police officers that are like on the street um, mm -hmm. than actual resource officers yeah, yeah. that are in the school. Um, just because I feel like, um, I mean, I, I go drop off my sister. So I know that, you know, there are certain schools, there are resource officers. Um, and, you know, they there are like sheriff and police officers like in the street as well. They just do it for, you know, a little, little bit of time. But I feel like it would be nice to see, you know, familiar faces like resource officers are usually like very like everyday kind of there and I know that they get to know the students so I feel like it would be nice to have a mix of like resource officers that are in the schools and then like police officers that are on the street um you know also like I remember that experience too I think we called it speak out <laughs> that event that we did with the police officers and and so yeah I do remember that um that officer um it was very just not a nice experience but he was um but yeah I mean it would it would be great to have that and also not just like um like regular police officers but like like you know I I like the idea of having the chief of police the the sheriff like the top because I feel like they have a little bit more power I feel like when it comes to like police officers or just resource officers it's it's a moment for them to listen about like how we feel about maybe their presence in school or how we feel about them but like having somebody of higher authority than them it would make a little bit of difference like hey like you know these are what we're thinking about your you know your subordinates we, we're here we're thinking about them and how they affect our daily lives but like mm -hmm. you as a higher up like we want you to make those changes um mm -hmm. so yeah but that that's I'll say that just that about that <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 
Tammy, do you have um, a resource officer at your school? No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, we talked about arts and we talked about music. There's just one other question that I have, and that is there are more violent acts that take place um, other than gun violence and young people dying like they are. Um, we haven't determined that it is gang related necessarily. Um, do you have an opinion? Question number one, so I have two more. <laughs> Question number one, do you think that these are gang related? Not that you have any personal knowledge, but do you think? And then the other question is, bullying is a kind of emotional and physical trauma, can be physical. Um, and do you think that there's any connection be between bullying, like in elementary school, for example, or middle school that carries over into some of these actions. So first question, gang related, second, bullying and how that may impact the future of violence. I'm gonna go with, um, yes, bullying, I feel like it does affect that a lot because then there is some kind of uh, resentment towards people that they feel that share the same connections to the people who bullied them when they were younger. So I feel like that creates like a false sense of kind of, mm, what's the word? It's like uh, kind of like forced hate. Like you don't know this person, but they remind you of the person who bullied you. So it's like, I'm going to hit you because you're probably just like that person. And if you keep seeing people around you that are that you believe that are like that, then I feel like some violence could occur for mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to say, I think that um, think that thinking that it's because of gangs, which it is in a certain aspect, but I think that's like an older mentality. Like, I feel like there's so many more aspects in this day and age that go into it than just games. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, I feel like, uh, I would say a lot of it in our age is just um, one, like unawareness with the use of guns, not really knowing um, I just it's too publicized at this point to our our age group and I'm saying our because I'm still young you know but it's too publicized like the music videos and the things we see and the movies we watch and as much as we want to say we have a mind of our own we don't we we're gonna do what we see unfortunately so like a lot of these little boys like they're watching this they're playing Call of Duty they're it's fun. It's something to do. So, like, I don't think a lot of youth really understand, like, you're holding somebody's life in your hands. Like, that's something you can't, can't backtrack. You can't take that back. So, and now they just passed the law that you don't have to go to the sheriff's office anymore. You can just, I want to go get a gun today. I'm going to go in there and go buy one. Somebody made me mad. I'm going to like, it's just too impulsive. It's too quick. It's too, um, it's made so easy nowadays. Like, mm -hmm. even if I'm in middle school, I got an older brother. I'm having a problem with this boy at school. It's just too easy. Mm -hmm. So awareness needs to be made. Um, and then we need to talk about the root like why it gets to that because i mean me growing up somebody make you mad you beat them up on the playground that was it mm -hmm. so we need to figure out where the transition came from mm -hmm. that to we're killing each other mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's a drastic like mm -hmm. now in schools it's it's not just issues it's not just i got suspended today it's 
like that's somebody's child. So it's like we got to figure out where that where the wall came up, where that differentiation came from. So I think we definitely need to have that conversation um, about how like media and stuff influences us and the things that we see. I think we need to talk about that. Thank you. Sure. And I understand that I'm still in that like very young age range in 16. I don't know if I can speak out too much. But what I do see more often around younger people, a lot of kids just hate each other. They're really, really angry. They wow. are, have such bad anger management issues wow. that it's their fault. It's just that they've, they're like in this cycle of feeling unheard. And so, mm -hmm. oh, no one's going to listen to me. Well, you see, actions speak louder than words. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that weird uh, motto or whatever. But they do it in like a how you like me now kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. But it's not for the betterment of them or others. It's just so they can show you like this is what you've pushed me to. And at that point, I feel like we have kind of failed that kid if they go to that point. And I feel the as Jordan said, find the root of the issue of why they feel that way. And they're just why they're so full of hate. Mm -hmm. Because when you're younger, I feel like you have a more open and progressive kind of mindset. You you are less likely to be set in your opinions and judge others. And the, the kid, the younger, the age I see, the more kids judge each other more often and the more hateful they are. And it's mm -hmm. like, dang, how did we get here? Because it's like elementary to like middle school year. People, kids are the most loving I've ever seen. They mm -hmm. hide they give each other kisses like it's so cute and then you get to like eighth grade high school people are like ready to actually tear each other apart and it's oh. really breaking wow. so i feel like we need to like yeah these it. kids are mean like actually, they're ruthless you're foul <laughs> they're so bad. like it's it's so crazy to see like it's not like just the little jokes and they're like they are genuinely just it's upset like Wow. wow wow and so the, i said that was my last question this really is my last question i'm sorry angie this is my last question do you think that there well i think i think uh gun storage is important like people need to lock their guns up there need to be gun locks that kind of thing just like seat belts you need seat belts when you drive but um do you think that there should be metal detectors at the entrance or doorways of schools that could detect guns being brought into the schools? And I would like to hear from everybody on that. And you can just say yes or no. You don't have to explain your position unless you want to. Definitely yes. Okay. Thank you. As long as it's not like a search thing, I would say yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what about you? Uh oh, he may be gone. Or I think it was like blocking out. I don't. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was because like internet problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Did you. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. The question was, um. Oh my goodness! Why didn't somebody tell me I was looking like that? Um. <laughs> my question was. <laughs> my question was, um. Do you think that there should be metal detectors at the entrances of schools, the kind that you walk through? not like searching. I believe that it really shouldn't be the case of trying to get metal detectors for there is a lot of other stuff that require metal and school supplies that would make it a bit more complicated to get inside and vic uh, how do you say more victimize a lot of students for assumptions of holding a weapon. Mm -hmm. And if those cause further problems, there could be a trusting issue between the students and the faculty. If the faculty can't trust the students, the students don't think that they're trusted. They think every single one of them are equally as, um, how do you say, guilty of holding a weapon. 
And I don't think that's the right mentality schools should have. I believe that it's more of the regulation of a gun itself, how it's gotten, for instance, the training behind it. Uh, whenever you go and buy a gun, you can go and buy a gun today after you're 18 with little to no effort. You have to get some registration and that's it. And sometimes it's not even that, but I believe it's the, uh, how do you say, the ownership of a gun should be a little more restricted and a little more secure, as well as the, all the guns in America should be at least like written down as like, I have this many weapons to kind of like reassure so then we know how many are in each like neighborhood or something, not trying to control it. Because I do believe that it's in every person's right to own a weapon of their choice for protection. But the regulation should still be a little more strict. Thank you. Cameron, do you think that there should be metal detectors, gun detectors at the entrances of schools? Um, I mean, I agree with Ryan. Okay, thank you. Natalia? Um, for the betterment of other people's safety, and because I really don't want any of my friends dying, and I don't want to die either, <laughs> and mostly because every day I get kind of a little more scared the amount of school shootings that happen nearby. And I'm not saying that everybody is guilty, and I'm not saying that Everybody is a suspect because that would be very marginalized and generalized. However, I do care about the safety of others and I feel like they would be necessary, but I also feel like it would feel like a prison when we're walking in there or the airport, I don't know, TS, TSA <laughs> at airport checking. But I really, agreeing with Ryan, there should be more regulation on the gun itself than the person because it's about how you use the weapon and what the weapon is used for rather than the person's intentions thank you and yeah i just care about other people's safety and my own and it's the whole school shooting thing has been like a serious freak out thing that i that's like top list i don't know yeah angie do you have a thought Gosh, I have several, <laughs> but um, for me personally, yes, I um, would love, I would, I hate that we have to get to this point to have metal detectors in schools or even like remote anything, but I believe it's necessary um, now. I don't, I mean, I know that some of the lifters here are not in Durham public schools, but um just yesterday Allison which is my sister she didn't go to Riverside yesterday because there was a threat um because of you know it was a non non like confirmed threat but they they actually um they called us and they said that it, uh, more law enforcement was like, we're going to be present um at school because of this threat and so my mom was like no we're not gonna we're not gonna risk it we're not you know we're just gonna keep her home so it's it's things like this um and just like the the shootings that um a lot of young people have have died from he just here in Durham um the the two the two boys that that um got taken uh because of gun violence in Riverside um it was really close to home <laughs> so that was uh that was I was just like well you know and um unfortunately um Allison's best friend brother was the one that that passed away um so it was it was just it was just too much <laughs> and it was um so I just I just think it's necessary unfortunately that's my opinion and I just think um I do agree with like the root cause I feel like mental health is like, for me, it's always been important, but I feel like mental health um, and just also family dynamics, I feel like is very important, like the school and the family, like the school environment has changed over the years. I feel like something that I really enjoyed seeing from the um, from the hillside 
um, like play was like the their part about community. I feel like the the shift to community has changed so much that I feel like that's a very like root cause or like integral into like what you know the shift of like where where did the shift happen like you know everybody is in a village and a community and now everything is so individualistic like everybody is worrying about themselves like nothing is connected um and I also agree with like Natalia like anger like kids are just so angry and they're so mean like um like Jordan said I don't and I just don't know you know where's that coming from and I do believe that technology is a big influence like social media um and also like kids are learning like kind of greed you know like this like um this this air of um of like wanting everything for themselves and not um not like taking in consideration life like they they view life as as something that you know they don't care anymore I don't know if that's a if that's a right way to put it but it's more of like well you know they just they just kind of shrug at life and I don't think they see the the beauty or importance of their own life because maybe they have all this hatred or just anger built inside of them. And I don't know kind of where this anger came comes from that they feel that it's so easy for them to take a life or they don't care um, mm -hmm. to. So it's just, but yeah, I'm just, that's my whole thoughts about this, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I really do think metal detectors are necessary, unfortunately. Um, and I and I, I think that brings just a lot of more issues as well. But um, I, I do think it, it would be for a peace of mind, like Natalia said, um, I think it would be necessary. Yeah, I agree. Like me and Angie are both older sisters. So I think we can both like it's hard, like just thinking about her being at school. And he, so it's like if some people's feelings have to get hurt or they'll be offended, but she's safe at the end of the day. It's like, it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. But there's metal detectors that aren't as sensitive as like little metal. Like they have metal detectors now that only, like they only go off if it's a, you know, it has to be a certain amount of, and then they'll check. And I, I mean, I think it's worth it at this point. Like if it wasn't, worth having we wouldn't be having this conversation so I think that's definitely important because their lives is more important than I feel a way because it's a metal, like you know yeah I want to this point because Angie I 100% agree however I feel like the adults need who make the laws need to be held accountable the adults who have the power in their hand to change things but don't for the simple fact that it's convenient to them and other benefited Americans is really, really astound, like astonishingly unbelievable. In my opinion, they would pass other laws to hide the truth from younger students, like erasing parts of history that you're not allowed, like in North Carolina that has passed. There are certain parts of history that you can no longer learn about because it, the topic is too sensitive for younger kids but they're just completely just erasing and deciding to rewrite history as they've done forever ago. And I feel like, so you're willing to protect kids from the, the truth rather than protecting them from someone using a weapon that could kill them. That to me, that, that, that those are the people that are in power right now. People like that are what's this country. And I feel like if we don't fix that, nothing will actually change. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. This is so important. And like um, Jordan said, with Jordan and Angie being older sisters and knowing that their younger sisters are going to school, then the protective factor comes in. And, and you know, it's like a mama bear. It's a sister bear. And it's like, you know, because I have those thoughts too. I'm like, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I don't even want to say, I don't even want to imagine, imagine. Um, and so whatever it takes, you know, um, that's what we need to do. So, and it'll take all of us, but this has been an important conversation. And thank you so much. Um, does anybody have a problem with me sharing your thoughts? 
that you've expressed. The only thing I regret is making mention. But, you know, we, we will survive. <laughs> At least people can see that this is real. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it for me, Angie. Please um, continue. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I thank you for, you know, holding the space for